Hi, I'm Pastor Bill here at Little White Chapel in Burbank, California. And this is my mom who's with me. Mom? Hi. Hi, Hi honey. Do you know this song? I just came back from uh, back east with my mom where she was celebrating the uh, 100th anniversary of her church, the church I was born in. But today is my birthday and I've had a few birthdays. And uh, my mom, who's had perhaps a few more than I have. Just a few. <laughs> has been a wonderful teacher in teaching me that the older you get, the more opportunity you have to share grace, to be kind, to speak softly, to let your first response perhaps come from wisdom rather than anger. And I want to say on my birthday, thank you for all the lessons. You are so welcome. Oh, thank you, honey. So let's sing the end of the song. Happy birthday, dear Bill. Here at Little White Chapel, you are always welcome to come and share some of your wisdom, some of your grace, some of your knowledge and some of your perspective with us because here at Little White Chapel, everybody is welcome. Amen? Amen. Happy For one that showed me kindness is the one that taught me kindness. Though I did not recognize it, still I might have died without it. Did you ever meet somebody in your life who scared you to death and when you look back later on that relationship you realize that was one of the greatest people you ever met? When I was a little boy growing up in my church, our minister's wife was tall and regal and she was a fabulous pianist. Her name was P.P. P. Dickerson. You know the kids had a great time with that. Her name was Philandria Pitts Dickerson. And every time I looked up at that tall, regal woman, it seemed to me she was looking down at me like this. And the reason was, little boys were not supposed to run up after church and bang on the piano. And this little boy, every Sunday, went up after church and bang on the piano. And oh, I got in trouble every week. But unbeknownst to me, she told my parents and my grandparents when our church moved to a new location and we had extra pianos, if we put one of these pianos in your house, he will play. I never knew that until I became an adult, but P.P. Dickerson gave me a piano P.P. Dickerson gave me music, and I gave music my life. I can never repay her for that. Little White Chapel is not a church with great resources, 
but it is a church with a great big heart that is interested in helping people unleash the gifts that they have to give, gifts that people cannot repay. You have gifts to give. You have gifts to give to make the world better. Come here to Little White Chapel, and together, let's get busy unleashing your gifts. You are always welcome. I didn't know about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> so where does that put me? <laughs> Stop! 
Pastor Bill at Little White Chapel in Burbank, California. We've come this I was a kid growing up learning how to play piano in church everybody wanted to play and sing that song it had a snappy rhythm and that little jazz progression right in the middle of the song we all love that and we like the words too as we've grown up and lived life a little and looked into the face of so many different challenges we are learning every day what it means to move forward with faith each one of us has our own personal problems. Our government is overrun and polarized by problems. And our churches are struggling. We have problems. But we are people of faith more and more. And faith has taught us this. We cannot sit back and just expect God to solve everything. We've got to roll up our sleeves and open our hands and put smiles on our faces and extend welcome and hospitality to the entire world, working along with God to make the challenges move away and the kingdom come. And as we do that, these lyrics of this wonderful Albert Goodwin song really write themselves again on our hearts. This part that goes like this. Come to Little White Chapel. Bring your faith, whatever shape it's in. Put it together with the faith you find here. And together, let's move forward in faith. You're always welcome here.
Good evening. I'm Jean Harris. I am William Thomas Jr.'s youngest sister, and we're here this evening with some of the members of the family just to share with you some of our fondest memories of Bill. Before we get started, I do want to thank Stuyvesant Heights for um, this memorial. Uh, I know it's been a labor of love uh, for, for each of the committee members, and we appreciate you for it. We love you for it. And uh, we ask God's continued blessings on you. And so let me introduce the family before we get started. To my right, and many of you will recognize her, is Bill's mom, uh, his favorite lady in the whole wide world, uh, Thelma Thomas, and our mother, uh, the matriarch is our, of our family. She is 95 years old, Stuyvesant. And I'm going to pause a minute so you can applaud that because that is worth celebrating. And also with us this evening is uh, my son, um, Bill's only living nephew, uh, Pastor Wade Thomas Harris, and his family members are with him. Uh, in, the, in the screen with him is his middle son, Noah, Noah Jason Harris. And we also this evening have his lovely and smart wife, uh, Belinda Harris. We you might also add beautiful. She is beautiful, smart, beautiful wife. But you know, I was going for the smart because you know that's that's who I am, where I am. Um, we also have uh, their youngest uh, child, um, Naomi, Naomi Joanna Janice Harris. She's the only person in the family who has four names. Um, she is with us this evening. And also with us is um, my husband of 44 years, uh, Stan Harris. So. Thank you so much again for indulging our family. Again, what we like to do is just take a few minutes to share some of our fondest memories. And we're gonna start with uh, one of Bill's favorite people in the world, and that is his great niece, Naomi. Naomi, what are, what are, what's uh, one of your fondest memories of Uncle Butch? One of my fondest memories of Uncle Butch was actually at your house. We were playing behind the couch, and you, you know that, like, ball house, kind of? Mm -hmm. We were playing with that, and I really enjoyed it. And I remember that because it's like, and, and your mom and I talked about it once, it's like you all sat there for hours and just <laughs> having a great time in the corner behind the couch. Belinda, do you want to add anything to that memory? Yeah, I, that's probably my favorite memory too. And I think the thing that stands out about it is most adults, we, we will play with children, but Uncle Butch truly enjoyed being with children and, and not just children, but our family and our kids. And I just remember that day going back and forth to that couch and he would still be back there. And he had a cup of coffee, he would warm it up. He get up and then he would go back behind that couch with Naomi and they were back there for hours and it just really left an impression upon me because he just really enjoyed spending time with his family and that's probably one of the things that I remember most about him yeah. it's just how much he loved his family and one of the things I miss the most um and and I think the the important thing about that scenario is they were on the floor they were sitting on the floor in a little space behind the couch next to the window, and they were just they were just having a great old time. Just yeah. a great old time. Yeah. Brother Noah, can you share with us your favorite memory of, of, of Uncle Butch? All right. So I don't have a certain memory, but I all I know is that whenever he walk in a room or talk to me, he always has he always he always has he had a smile on all the time. He was never sad. And he was always just so nice uh, and always care he was so caring. Yeah, he was nice and caring because you were his great nephew. Now his sister has a whole bunch of other stories that I could tell, a whole bunch of other stories. <laughs> Pastor Wade, the great nephew. Oh, the Man. nephew, not the great nephew, the nephew. Yeah. I uh, actually feel like I could write a book of memories of Uncle Butch, um, many from my childhood, adulthood. Um, I think the one that stands out to me 
uh, is actually a conversation I had after I read a, a biography about Bayard Rustin. Uh, he was a he was a, a you know a, a black figure that honestly I didn't know a lot about, um, and I didn't know how influential he was not just in the civil rights movement but also in the rights for LGBTQ um, mm -hmm. early on. And I remember he and I just having a really deep conversation about, uh, you know, Uncle Butch's life, you know, a side of his life that I, I wasn't aware of, some of the things that he went through, um, but also um, just what Bayard Rustin meant to him personally uh, as a black man um, and as a gay black man. And mm -hmm. so um, that just gave me a different insight into him and just a lot of what he went through but man there were so many times where he encouraged me I mean he was one of the first people who said I really believe you're called to ministry um and, and really encouraged me to pursue that um you know there were just times where he talked to me about the music industry and showbiz because I DJ professionally um full-time for 12 years and just some of the stuff I went through in that and so there's just so much um that I could go through and then of course when I was around their age um, and he was on a Cosby show and him coming to my school and everyone wanting an autograph and him literally signing all those autographs, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the kids at the school. And so that was just the kind of guy that he was, yeah. you know. You know, what's, what's nice about this conversation is that many of the things that we're saying that we experienced with him as his family, I know that there are people who are sitting in Stuyvesant Heights today who are saying, I can identify with that because he did that with, to me when I was a young person, when I was a kid, when I was coming up with Stuyvesant. And what it helps us to understand is he was the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. And he treated people the same, no matter how influence, influential he became in his community, in the broader community, on Broadway, on television, as a pastor, no matter what, he was the same everywhere. So what a blessing to have known him. Well, what a blessing to be his baby sister. What a blessing. I'm gonna close with the diva, but I'm gonna first go with his brother-in-law, brother Stan Harris, and ask Stan to um, share his fondest me memory. One of my fondest, I have several, like Wade mentioned, I have several fond memories of, of uh, Butch. Uh, having known him since I was 15. So that's 53 years when I started hanging out with uh, the love Gene of life. And, and their family. Uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the fondest memories that I have is when uh, Jean and I, we were married. Uh, actually, she was carrying Wade at the time, but uh, she and I and, and mom had, had gone to, uh, to New York uh, to spend Thanksgiving holiday mm -hmm. uh, with Butch. And all the time that he spent uh, taking us around, uh, not just Manhattan, where we where we were staying, but uh, got to Brooklyn and got to Harlem and some other places. This was the first time for me that I had been to New York. I think Jean had been before and mom mm -hmm. had been before, mm -hmm. but I had never been to New York. So I had all these places that that I had heard about. Uh, and we had three days that we got a chance to to see most of it. And he was the one that kind of took us around and made sure we got where we wanted to go. And he was so patient with that. I mean, I was very pregnant with Wade. It was November and I actually had Wade at the beginning of January. So it was the end of November. And he was living in a in a fifth floor walk up with which many of you all may remember, which means <laughs> no elevator. And I had to walk up those and he was so patient and so loving. Um, because of course Wade would say because I was carrying his perfect nephew, right, Wade? Well, and and I also want to add this. I firmly believe that trip is what spawned my love of New York. Is that what it was? <laughs> because it is my favorite city in the world, and so I am very positive that <laughs> had you guys not made that, that trip at that time, that I, my love of New York may not have developed in quite the same way. Well, and then you had a second, an, uh, another mm -hmm. trip when you were very little with yep. your grandmother yep. and you all went to see, he took you to, to a Broadway show to see The yep. King and I. How old yep. were you then? I like, think I was about three. They also went to Harris, didn't they? Like didn't they go to Harris, the toy store? 
Did they? Did yeah. you own? Yeah. 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 And he bought he 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 bought his doll. He, oh, yeah. did he buy that Mr. T doll? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uncle did not want him to buy that doll, but he well, and this this doll. was before all the Uber, so I saw all the yellow cabs and the limos and all of that mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. and so yeah, yep. And so um, I'm just going to share, uh, I, I, like everybody else, have a lot of favorite memories. And, and one of the things I know um, that touches my heart, I'm going to share uh, a touch my heart memory, and then I'm, I'm going to share a funny memory. And that is that he, he encouraged me in every way educationally. He was probably one of the proudest people on the planet when I got my PhD. He, he was one of the proudest people on the planet. And um, he would fly in from New York or California, wherever he was living, uh, to make sure he would share with us those seminal moments in our lives, those important moments in our lives. And he, did, he, he missed very, very few of them. Um, and then a funny one is that really, that Wade tells me I need to quit hating on Uncle Butch for this. And there were several times that I can remember one in Las Vegas where um, we were, the whole family was in Las Vegas and we were in a restaurant and we were having cocktails and he got carded. And I said, <laughs> don't you want to card me too? And they said, oh no. Now, why is this funny? because he's six years older than I am. <laughs> he never let me forget that. And that wasn't the only time that ever happened. It just was- It, it, just it happened another time in Massachusetts when I got my, uh, when I got my master's degree. I remember that now. And okay, we were, you and have we to bring were, it up. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look, Uncle, Uncle Butch had found the fountain of youth. He, and did. he didn't share it with us. That was he one did. thing. He shared a lot with us. He did not he share, didn't the share that. <laughs> I'm going to close with mom and, and I thank you all for being patient with us, but there's so much that we could say and talk about. Uh, and we all call him Butch, as, as you know, there, he had so many names. It, you know, he was William Thomas Jr. He was Bill. He was Billy. He was Reverend. He was doctor. Uh, but to us, he was our brother, our uncle. He was he was Uncle Butch to us. And so I'm going to um, just ask mom to share one or two of her fondest memories of that you can just start with one and then we'll just go to wherever else you want to go how can you raise an entire family and have just one or two fondest <laughs> memories that's true that's true mom so give me but, one <laughs> start with one but uh you were going to tell them about the time that you the the you were going to a concert the concert one of the concerts at Stuyvesant and you I, left your I dress. Had, I had, had always been the mistress of ceremonies for his uh, uh, concerts with the young adults on uh, uh, the first Sunday in October in November, and I we were I was on the train almost to Brooklyn when I remembered I had left my dress, it was very important to me and to the to this concert that I wear a long dress. Mm -hmm. it, and I had left it laying on the bed in the apartment. Mm -hmm. And he had to, he, he directed the choir on at the church got on the train and went back to New York and got my dress. So you guys were on your way to church that morning. Mm -hmm. The concert was that afternoon. Mm -hmm. He directed the choir and between services, he went back to, mm -hmm. wow, he's a good son. That's, That's a good son. He's a yeah, good son. Yeah, because I could have just done it with the dress I had on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it it, I didn't mean to do it, but it did. It, it happened. happened. It happened. <laughs> but but I think what Mom brings up, you know, also just talks about his character and his sense of excellence and wanting to do things right. And also, he loved this woman better than any woman on the planet. He called her every day, 
every single day, no matter what. Yes, sometimes it was multiple times a day and almost even sometimes when he was traveling in Europe and other places, he would call mom. Uh, but he he mostly called her every day and talked and they talked for a long time and mom had and I really didn't know how important that was to her and how consistent it was until mom came to live with Stan and I uh, about seven years ago and I saw it and heard it and it was one of the highlights of of her life what a blessing what a blessing he has been to all of our lives to all of our family to our extended family, to the family that, that's not here with us. I don't know if anybody else has anything else they want to say before we close. Something you may have forgotten that you said, wanted to say. Well, I thank you all uh, for indulging this little family conversation. And I also thank you for uh, memorializing um, our brother, our son, our brother-in-law, our uncle, our great uncle, in this very fine fashion. And I also um, want you to know that we were pleased to share him with you all of the years that he was um, the director of music at Stuyvesant Heights. We love you. Uh, and there's, as our pastor says, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Take care, take care everyone. Hi, my name is Nate Harris. Uncle Butch is my great uncle, and a few things I've always got to remember about him. He was super caring, he was always funny, he always made great jokes. He was the only person that could get away with teasing my grandmother and not have any repercussions. Hello, I bring you greetings from the sanctuary of Church of the Valley in Van Nuys, California, a sister Disciples of Christ congregation. I am Reverend Dr. Michael Kosick and Reverend Dr. William Thomas Jr. was my husband. We met in 1986 and we were together for 35 years. And I was by his side, holding his hand and singing the music of our faith into his ear as he transitioned from this life into the next. After Billy passed, uh, just one week short of a year ago, one of the things I did was to get rid of several items around the house. Not personal items, medical items. When he showered, he had to wear these plastic shields that covered the ports on his chest for his dialysis and chemotherapy. There were a couple of dozen medical bottles and then a few other items, and I got rid of them right away because they didn't represent who Billy always was to me. They didn't represent the man that I know, that I knew, and, and I still know, who was so incredibly full of life. Billy was 15 and a half years older than me, but it was often I who was trying to keep up with him, not only in physical activities, but also it was hard to keep up with him in the way that he took on life. I'm sure you all know exactly what I mean by that. It was really tough to get Billy to stop and just do nothing. He always needed to be doing something, working, creating, playing the piano. He was forever trying to make things better for those around him. And he did just that. 
He did so much for so many people, and I was one of those people. He inspired me in so many ways. He inspired me as an actor, he inspired me as a pastor, and most importantly, he inspired me as a person, to be a better person. So much of who I am and what I do is because of Billy. He taught me just by the way he lived his life, and I'll always be thankful for that. And I must tell you, he often talked about his time with Stuyvesant Heights, the people, the music, the memories. He would be so humbled to know that you are honoring him so many years after his time with you, but it doesn't surprise me that you're doing so. The impact that Billy has made on all of us is one that we will hold on to forever. We are each different people because he was in our lives. On behalf of my family, the Kosicks, the Thomases, the Harrises, I want to thank you for keeping Billy a part of your family. Thank you for your love, for including me in the celebration, for including my family, and for the love that you have shown to Billy all those years ago and today. Thank you. <laughs>